Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Victoria Memorial Hall, the, to the Eastern Quadrangle, to the first Infosys Science Foundation Prize Lecture, so which is being presented jointly by the Victoria Memorial Hall, the Infosys Science Foundation, and the British Council. This also marks the beginning of a long collaboration between the British Council and the Victoria Memorial Hall. And uh, Radhika from the British Council will tell you a little more about this collaboration. But this evening, speaker is Ananya Jahanara Kabir, Professor of English Literature, King's College, London. And she will be speaking on In Search of Creole India's Words and Worlds. I would like to invite Radhika Singh from the British Council, Assistant Director, British Council, to kindly come and say a few words on this occasion, particularly about the collaboration that we have entered into with the Victoria Memorial. Thank you very much, Raju. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you also for making it here. It's a nice cold evening and an excellent day to be here. Uh, allow me to begin by saying congratulations, Ananya, on winning this Infosys Prize. We at the British Council are extremely proud of you. As a Bengali, as a Kolkatan, as a British Council Library member, former member, as a woman in academia and higher education, as a UK alumni, it, as I was telling you, you just tick all the boxes so perfectly. We are extremely proud of you. So congratulations. And I understand it's a double century for you on winning the Humboldt Prize as well. So many, many, many congratulations from all of us at the British Council. Join to the we must begin also by saying thank you to you. You have turned this institution around. You've transformed Victoria Memorial. We, are, we consider ourselves privileged to be a partner of the Victoria Memorial Hall. And what we are doing now today is the first day of the formal partnership. But as many of you here will know, the partnership between British Council and Victoria Memorial Hall has been in existence for quite some time. In fact, you will remember last year, which was the year of culture for British Council, you, many of you would have come for the Museum of the Moon, for the Silk River, for things like, uh, I can't quite recall all the other events, you know, Kalam, all the lit fests we do. There's been just so many things, you know. And the formalization of this uh, wonderful engagement and association that we've had comes in the form of uh, an MOU signing that will take place next month and we hope to work very much more closely with Jointuda and the Victoria Memorial Hall uh, to support research collaborations between UK and India, to support more showcasing of British arts and culture in Kolkata and to also support the capacity building of people in the museums and heritage sector. So all of this will come out in more detail in the near future but for today this is just the announcement of this formal partnership beginning. So I think we all should be happy about that. Uh, there's not very much more for me to say but just to say uh, all the best and thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much, Radhika. You have, of course, uh, raised a lot of expectations among the people, and I'm sure we can live up to these expectations. Um, and thank you very much for, apart from the uh, gratitude and the thanks that you gave for Ananya's association with the British Council and so on, that she also has received other awards. And I would like to emphasize that as an old loyalist of the Germans, that congratulations on winning the Humboldt prize as well. And Anuna a little while ago was just telling us that, you know, she doesn't want to stop there. You know, there are more prizes which are on the radar and um, possibly the next target is going to be the French. Let's see. Uh, that will happen as and when it happens. So I would now like to request uh, Dr. Jayanta Shengupta, Secretary and Curator of Victoria Memorial Hall, to introduce the speaker for the evening and say a few words also about the topic that is going to be discussed. Thank you, Raju. Thank you, Radhika. And most of all, uh, thank you, Anunna, for being here. Uh, and thank all of you. A very good evening and a very warm welcome on this cool evening uh, to the Infosys Prize Lecture. It's a privilege and honor to have with us Professor Anunna Jahanara Kobir uh, to give this lecture for us. And as you have just heard, uh, it's a collaboration between the Victoria Memorial Hall and the Infosys Science Foundation and the British Council, the partnership of having events 
involving UK-based scholars in partnership with the British Council uh, is beginning with effect from today. So this is an auspicious evening in that respect. Uh, <coughs> so um, the the uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to speak anything about the the topic of the lecture. Uh, Professor Kavir will will speak on this. I'll just. I mean, she is one of the most accomplished scholars of our time. Um, and to this audience, she needs no introduction, but I will just read out uh, a few things from, uh, a few highlights of her, of her career for those who do not know. Uh, professor Anunna Jahanara Kavir, who is Professor of English Literature at King's College London, is a literary and cultural historian with interests spanning music, dance, film, the visual arts, academic discourse, and literature. And she's invested in examining what these forms of cultural production can tell us about global modernity. Uh, Professor Kavir studied at the universities of Calcutta, Oxford, and Cambridge before taking up a prize research fellowship at Trinity College, Cambridge from 1997 to 2001. After further postdoctoral scholarships at Clare Hall, Cambridge, and the Center for History and Economics, then at King's College, Cambridge, where she was from 2001 to 2003, she spent 10 years from 2003 to 2013 at the School of English, University of Leeds. In 2011, she was appointed Professor of the Humanities at the school. She joined the Department of English at King's College, London, in April 2013. Between 2005 and 2011, Professor Kavir was co-investigator or lead investigator in collaborative projects funded through the large research programs of the Arts and Humanities Research Council, the AHRC, and the Economic and Social Research Council, the ESRC, on the theme, Diasporas and Migrations, Religion and Society. As one of the first HRC knowledge transfer fellows, she co-curated a multi-sided art exhibition titled Kismat and Karma, South Asian Women Artists Respond to Conflict. In 2011, she was awarded a British Academy Senior Research Fellowship to complete a monograph on the partition of India. And it was my good fortune to invite her to a partition conference that we had uh, a collaborative venture between the Victoria Memorial Hall and the Indian Museum in August 2017 where we took stock of the scholarship on the partition at the end of the 70 years of, of the event. Uh, during 2013 to 18, Professor Anunna Jahanara Kavir will lead a research project on Afro-diasporic rhythm cultures and modernity funded by a European Research Council advanced grant. She has authored and edited several books. I'll just, as a, as, a, as a very small sample, I will just mention two of them, uh, two single authored publications, which include Territory of Desire, Representing the Valley of Kashmir, which was published by the University of Minnesota Press in 2009, and in India by Permanent Black in the same year, and it was shortlisted for the 2010 European Society for Studies in English Prize. And then, in 2013, her book, Partitions, Post-Amnesias, 1947-1971 and Modern South Asia, which was published by Women Unlimited in India and Oxford University Press, Pakistan, in September 2013. Uh, now to put into context this evening's lecture, Professor Ananda Jahanara Kavir is a winner of the Infosys Prize 2017 in the humanities. And this is her award lecture. The Infosys Prize is given to contemporary scientists and researchers below the age of 55 and consists of a gold medal, a citation by the jury, and a purse of rupees 65 lakhs. The Infosys Prize lecture series features talks by the Infosys laureates on their award-winning work and also by jurors on interesting work in their respective fields. These public talks were established by the Infosys Science Foundation to spread awareness on the truly awe-inspiring research and cutting-edge science being done by scientists 
and to inspire young researchers and students to make their passion their profession. The Infosys Science Foundation has created a brief video presentation on Professor Kabir and what inspires her by way of an introduction to her and we are going to play that short video uh, which is of approximately one minute's duration after which we will invite Professor Kabir to uh, give her lecture on In Search of Creole India's Words and Worlds but first the video and once again, I will join the others in congratulating Ananda very warmly for her Infosys Prize, uh, Infosys Prize, as well as the Humboldt Prize. So this is really a bumper year for her, and we will pray, we will hope that this year brings an even richer harvest. So thank you, Ananda. We will play the video now. I was growing up as a Bengali Muslim child in the Deccan. There was a dissonance in the life of my home and the life outside, but it was a very creative dissonance because it made me understand what living in a composite society was all about. I always want to be the kind of person who works through a spirit of dissonance. I want to continue to take subjects that most people think don't belong to me and I want to continue to ask very simple questions from those subjects which are apparent to me because I don't belong to those subjects. And I want to continue to write interesting books which hopefully make people think twice about themselves and their place in the world. We apologize for the technical glitch, but fortunately it's all good now. Uh, so, shall we begin? Yeah, please. Uh, before uh, Professor Kabir takes the microphone, may I request Dr. Jayanta Shangupto to please hand over a memento on behalf of Victoria Memorial Hall to the speaker of the evening. And Jointo has already apologized for the technical glitch, but uh, I look at it in a different positive way. You see, the, it was tested and the sound was there, everything was in order. But listening to the achievements of Professor Kabir and the prizes she has won, even the laptop was speechless. So, so with that, we would like you to continue with your lecture today. And of course, we would like to request you to kindly switch off your mobile phones or keep them on silent mode. After the presentation, there will be a Q&A session. Uh, so you're free to ask questions at that time. Sure. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Ananya Jahanara Kobir to deliver the 2017 Infosys Prize Lecture on In Search of Creole India's Words and Worlds. Professor Kobir. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Jantada, for that extremely warm welcome. Thank you, Radhika, also, for those words. Um, it's really an immense honor. Can everybody hear me OK? Yeah. It's an immense honor to stand here at the historical Victoria Memorial Hall in the presence of this very special audience to deliver this lecture. And so before I start, I would like to thank once again all those who have made this lecture possible today, the team at the Infosys Prize Foundation, um, the Infosys Science Foundation and those at the Victoria Memorial Hall, um, in particular Dr. Jantha Shengupto and the British Council who have entered into collaboration with the Victoria Memorial Hall um, in support of this lecture. And I'm very pleased to, be the, uh, to furnish you with the event that inaugurates the formal collaboration. I would also like to thank once again, um, though I don't think any representatives are here today, uh, the distinguished jury for the Infosys Prize who thought it fit in November 2017 to elect me to that year's Prize for the Humanities. Such an honor could not have come my way without the training I received in this great city of ours, from the educational institutions that shaped me to the history of the city itself with which those institutions are fundamentally linked. I began my schooling at the Masonic Montessori on Park Street, 
and after a seven-year sojourn in the Deccan Peninsula, returned to Kolkata for an uninterrupted stint that took me all the way to an MA in Calcutta University that I left midway to take up a scholarship at the University of Oxford. While four years at, the, at Our Lady Queen of the Mission School reacquainted me with the milieu and mores of the Para, the locality into which I had been born, Park Circus, Two years of what we call plus two education at Loretto House took me back to Park Street where my Montessori school still stands. I ended up at the English Department of Presidency College, a venerable institution already familiar to me through the stories of my father and his friends on College Street where my mother too had spent a number of her early years as a student of Calcutta Medical College. At Presidency College, I learned the fundamental tools of the literary, crit literary critics trade. While absorbing lessons on the history of the English language and its literature, perhaps one would say today an old fashioned curriculum, but extremely uh, foundational. Um, I'm so happy to see uh, uh, somebody I associate very closely with my teaching there, even though I was not fortunate ever to have been taught by you, Shupriyadi, but still, I, I consider you part of that milieu. And this training converted what I think I always possessed, an innate curiosity to push beyond the familiar, and it converted it into a philological curiosity, a love of the word and the connection between words. More than that, more about that, sorry, in the course of this talk. Some extra educational institutions, if you like, made it possible for me to develop that curiosity into a method for analyzing culture in ever broadening senses. The Alliance Francaise, where I learned French for a year before leaving for the UK, and the Max Müller Bhavan, where I took my first German class in the summer of 1986 when I was still at school. These resources, which were very freely available, I think, to many of us, um, instilled in me a love of languages that honed my comparative instinct and led me to pursue language learning at every stage of my career ever since, and I'm still doing it. I don't believe, actually, in stopping learning, frankly speaking. I believe that we have to keep... Uh, my mother is in the audience. She always tells me, um, So, you know, that's really what I think language learning helps me do that. These institutions were far more than places to study European languages. They were windows onto the world at a time before the internet. To them then, I must add the British Council, whose library and associated cultural and pedagogic resources were an invaluable supplement to the degree in English honors I was pursuing. Through them, to quote John Donne, a favorite poet of ours whom we learned to read and appreciate in presidency, we made a little room are everywhere. But the sterling education I received went beyond the words that I learned to analyze, immersing me indeed in many nestled worlds. While my friends at Queen of the Mission School had been drawn from the Bengali Muslim, Bengali Christian, and broadly Anglo-Indian inhabitants of Park Circus, in Loretto House I befriended girls from demographic microcosms in Dharamtala, Entali, and Bobajar, whose branches of the Loretto Mission were